Hello, so this video is on the TED Talk, and the title of the TED Talk was Does the World Need Nuclear Energy? And this was by Stuart Brand and Mark Z. Jacobson. And um, so the first thing that we had to do was list five facts. My first facts, my first fact was that they, um, the first one who was Stuart or Mark, I'm honestly not sure. He said that if all of your electricity in your lifetime came from nuclear, the waste from that of a lifetime of electricity would go into one Coke can. But one day of coal adds up to 19,000 tons of carbon dioxide. So he showed a diagram and he put a Coke can into all the coal that would be used up and it was just like a little minuscule thing kind of arguing that we wouldn't use up as much nuclear waste at all to go into a lot of energy like coal you use up a ton of coal to just get the same amount of energy um the second fact was to get one gigawatt gigawatt of electricity you will need 250 miles of wind farm so his argument was that the wind farms make a huge footprint on the world and um our countries and our states and saying that to build a wind farm it takes up a bunch of space and in one country he said that they're actually already maxed out of wind farms because um, there's not enough space to put them you know you have to have 250 miles of wind farm to just get one gigawatt of electricity and that also kind of ties into his point of like you know wind won't always be there and like maybe i see that as you know wind you know there he did point out a country was out of wind for a week and they had to borrow nuclear waste from the country over but i feel as though he's saying you know there's only so far i can build a wind farm until you know it's out and then you know the countries evolve and how much you're going to need more electricity and more wind farms and there's only so far you can build a wind farm and once you reach that max but the world keeps growing what are you going to do um you're going to run out of electricity so the next fact was it takes 10 to 15 years to put up so this is this is the next argument this is the other argument of wanting wind farms and solar um it takes 10 to 19 years to put up a nuclear power plant while wind and solar only takes two to five years so that's the whole you know paying people to build it to you know check it to um all that kind of stuff it goes a lot of money goes into that so the more years it takes the more money you're putting into that and so there, I mean, obviously, in reality, there would be way more money going into a nuclear plant. You have to build um, safety spaces around it. Um, you know, that was that was his argument too. He are um, he said that everyone gets confused with the footprint and like space that it takes up. The footprint that a wind. Um, wind farm, just a one wind um, mill thing, it only takes up where the pole hits the ground. So he's saying that you can do anything around the pole, you can do agriculture, like he was saying that that takes up, and you can, you know, build land or um, build roads and just kind of have free space for that. So really the footprint is very small, and, you know, the other guy was saying that it takes up, but he was saying that it really isn't. So that was like definitely a deadlock where I was and I was a little confused on, you know, because they're both coming at each other with different facts and they both seemed pretty correct and they both were saying they were facts and they both were contradicting each other. But anyway, the years that it takes, it would put a lot more money into a nuclear plant while he's saying something super simple by like, why don't we just use the wind and the sun that we see every single day? Um, and put that into energy. Why not? Why would we risk, you know, 
ourselves and losing more people. He showed a lot of diagrams of how the nuclear and the coal set up a, set off a lot more carbon um, dioxide, which would be killing. You know, we have about three thousand deaths that wind uh, wind and solar would kill by releasing the carbon dioxide, but I think it would get up to about twenty seven thousand. He he charted that people would start to be getting killed um, by the CO2 released from the nuclear plant. Um, and my next fact was, was to power the world with 50% wind, you would need about 1% of the world land. So that's again saying that, you know, the other guy was like saying that it takes up so much space, but he was really saying to power the world with half wind, you would only take up 1% of the world land. But that also go, ties into, you know, we're talking about 1% um, like that seems small but you really have to put that into a scale and you would have to see how much land because taking up 1% of land say you just take up that straight are we gonna take that straight or are we gonna divide that into you know different states and countries and see how that works um, my next fact is using nuclear um, will melt the ice in the Arctic a lot faster than the wind would and that's also a problem in the world right now is um, global warming and uh, melting of the ice and the polar bears dying and everyone in the Arctic and you know obviously if we had nuclear waste like the coal is already contributing to um, global warming and so the nuclear waste would also contribute to global warming a lot faster um, and I think that's also kind of why we are sort of um, turning towards you know, wind and solar because um, because of the whole global warming thing kind of coming arise of now. So um, I think a lot of people would be heated that now we want nuclear um, power plants um, for energy and that kind of goes against the whole global warming that would just honestly speed global warming in the Arctic and the melting of the ice probably two times faster than it is now. Um, so what I said that it correlates to this course because it has to do a lot with energy and gases and it, it has to, you know, everything we've learned, a lot of it has to do with what this talk was talking about. Um, we've learned about CO2 and gases that are given off different things to create reactions. So basically, you know, the nuclear plant is a whole reaction and so is um, the wind and and how that goes into, you know, how you collect the sunlight and to turn that into energy and how the nuclear can turn into energy that's a whole formula we learned a lot about equations and how things certain things match up to make a different uh, you know reaction and equation so uh, I think that totally ties into what we're learning we're also learning about you know uh, fossils and uh, recently we're learning about fossils and radioactivity um, so that has a lot to do with this as well if we're talking about nuclear you know waste and plants that we're going to be building that has a lot of radioactivity in it um, so and then my personal reflection is like I said I would I'm definitely still unsure about this topic I think both arguments uh, are really fair it's really hard to pick one I said before you know, they both were coming at you with facts about the same topic. So it's kind of hard to, you know, maybe decipher which one is truly true, or maybe they both are, and it's just something like this is, you know, just by one TED Talk you can't really decide, you know, has my view changed? I, I definitely don't um, have a different view. Not that I had a huge view on it before, but um, I definitely... was very neutral about it. I think, you know, solar panels are great and wind is great and all that, you know, trying to get energy where we can, you know, naturally, but as uh, you know, I'm I'm also for gas and running our cars and that kind of stuff because we need that and I I genuinely think we do. You know, there was an argument in my town a few years ago about, you know, not having the pipelines through our town and 
I think, you know, my personal opinion was, you know, we need that. I understand people are environmental, and wind is great, solar is great. Um, I'm not even sure what I'm on in this argument, but I'm just saying that I think there are certain people that are to extremes where you have to kind of look back and you're like, you know, I agree with solar panels and I agree with wind turbines, but I also agree with, you know, keeping my electricity on and keeping heat in my house, you know, so I think that's a huge thing as well. I think there are, you know, with these kind of arguments, people are too one-sided to see the other side and it, it doesn't go anywhere because personally you need both. You need, you know, there's there's really no, no side for me. You can have both. I, I just think that, um, you know, you kind of have to look at it logically and how you want to live your life. And um, I also said, uh, you know, we have all this nuclear waste. What are we going to do with it? So why not use it up for energy? I think that's where I was also a little confused because, you know, I understand that, yeah, if we use it up for energy, there's a lot more risk for deaths and, you know, polluting the air. But I also feel like, um, what are we going to do with it just kind of sitting around? Um, might as well use it for some energy. Just like, you know, if we get wind every day, we get sun every day, might as well use that for energy. Like I was saying, it's it's just sort of hard to pick a side because I genuinely believe that either side um, could create an argument well. And you could work together and create something that would work because, like I said, I would love to get energy from you know, the sun and the wind, but sometimes that's not enough, so I need gas to heat my house, I don't want to be cold, I, I don't want to be too hot, you know, you know, just trying to, you know, keep homeostasis and figure out how to stabilize life instead of, you know, obviously there's going to be bumps in the road, but you got you kind of outweigh the pros and the cons and that kind of stuff, so that's, you know, my take on the TED Talk, um, about, uh, does the world need nuclear energy? And thank you. I know this was long, but I just had a lot of things to say. So thank you very much.